Welcome to this video, great to have you on board. My name is Max and in the last video of this project series, we started working on our toolbar, we learned about theming and you learned how to create a responsive navigation here. Now the navigation isn't finished though. I want to finish it in this video and I want to show you how to dynamically populate your toolbar and your navigation drawer in this application. Now for that, I'll go back to the app.view file where I was working and actually I want to store my menu, the menu setup in a property in my data property of the view instance. So here I'll add a new property and I'll name it menu items. And this should be an array. Now I'll represent each menu item as a JavaScript object where I expect to have an icon because I need an icon for both my drawer as well as my uh, toolbar. So I'll add icon here and I will also add another property, the title. So basically the text I want to display. We can start right away. I can grab the icon we have here, the supervisor account, add it here and say view meetups as a title. This would be my first um, object, my first menu item. Of course, it's not being displayed right now, but we'll build the menu here and then we'll display it. So next I can duplicate this and now it's all about finding fitting icons and assigning titles. Now for this application, I already searched for a couple of icons. You can of course search the material icons page I showed in the last video of the series to find the one you like the most. The next item I want to add in the menu is the room icon. This uh, is a fitting icon for the organized meetup menu item, which will later allow us to go to the page where we create a new meetup. Duplicate this. Thereafter, I want to have the person icon, which is a fitting icon for the menu point of profile of the user profile, which um, you should be able to visit through this button here in the end. Then I'm going to duplicate this twice again. The fourth item actually should be face and this should be the sign up menu item. And the last one, lock underscore open for sign in is the well, last menu item I want to add. Now here's an important note. In this application, I'll of course add authentication later. And once we have that implemented, we'll only show menu items which make sense. So for authenticated users, we want to show the first three. And for unauthenticated users, the last two, because unauthenticated users certainly need to sign up or sign in before they can do something with our application. So this is the setup I want to use. Now we have the menu items stored in this array. Now I want to output them dynamically here in the template. How do you output content dynamically in a Vue.js application? How do you output an array dynamically? Well, with V4. So to the wrapping list tile, which holds our action and the text, we can add V4 and simply loop for our items. So I'm looping through the whoops, menu items here, the menu items property we just created. It is a good practice to assign a key then. So let's dynamically bind a key for each loop item. And I'll use item title, which will be a unique string. So it makes up for a good key. And then I can start replacing the hard-coded values here with the dynamic ones, like item icon, referring to that icon property we set up down there in our items. And of course, replace the text with item title here. With that, let's do the same for the toolbar. Here, we got our buttons through which I want to loop. So V4, and then again, item in menu items, assign a key here, item title, and replace both the icon and the text. So I, uh, item icon and item title, like that. Let's save this and let's see if it worked as it should. If we have a look at our application, this looks uh, kind of good. I think we have some fixing to do regarding the width of our toolbar, though keep in mind, in the final application, there will only be a maximum of three items displayed because we'll either have sign up and sign in being hidden because we're authenticated or the other three because we're not authenticated. So actually it's not a problem in the final application. If I decrease this in width and have a look at the drawer, this looks good too. 
With that, we got our design finished or the toolbar finished. We got our items added. Of course, none of them does anything. We haven't set up routing. So that will be the task we have to tackle next, add routing to our application to make sure we can actually go somewhere when we click these items. So let's tackle routing next. We already have the router installed since we chose to do so when we set up this project. And we got one root route by default, the hello route, the components hello file here. And we don't actually see that being displayed. The reason for this is that we have no router view. So let's start by re-adding that. In the app.view file, in the main section, let's add router view here. And let's save this. Now we see our welcome page. This is what we started with. Now, I of course don't want to use that. I want to use my own pages. I will go back to the application therefore and remove the hello.view file. And I want to add some other components there. Now here, I'll first of all create a subfolder a subfolder named meetup with a capital M here. That's the naming convention I'm going to follow here. And in that folder, I wanna store all the meetup related components. I'll also create another folder named user where I wanna store the user related components. And then on the root level, I'll create a file home.view. So that's going to be, to be the home page on which we start eventually. In that home page, I'll add a template with a div for now where I'll simply say the home page. And I'll start with a simple template like this and all the components for now, we'll then fill them with live throughout this project. So let me copy that template. And in the meetup folder, I now also want to create some fitting pages, which we'll need. Oops, not a directory though. Here, I'll first of all create a meetups.view file, which will be the page we visit when we want to see a list of all meetups. So let me quickly create that file open it and paste in the same content here. I'll say the meetups page, of course. Now, whenever we click there, we are on the meetups page. We also had a page to create a new meetup though. So I'll also create a new file, the create meetup.view file. This component here will actually contain my create meetup page. Now, the next component I wanna add is in the user folder because there we also have a profile, a sign up and a sign in page. So let's add the profile.view file in that user folder. And as a side note, I'll later reorganize these files and structure them a bit differently, but for now this will do. So here we'll have the user page. Then I'll also add the sign in.view file. Here, let's add that, the sign in page. And finally, let's add a third file here, signup.view, and let, let's add the sign up page here. With that, I got all the pages I need for now. Again, we'll of course work on them throughout the project. Now we can register our routes in the index.js file in the router folder. As a side note, if you're wondering how that gets into our project, in the main.js file, we are importing that file Webpack simply is configured to automatically fetch the index.js file if we're just referencing a folder as we are here. So this could be completed to slash index, but again, Webpack completes it automatically in this setup here. And then the router, which is exported in that file, keep in mind, we're using the router here, we're exporting a new router. That is simply added as a router to our root view instance. So this is how that comes together. Now in that router, I want to register more routes or different routes. The root path, for example, should lead to the home component. So first of all, I have to overwrite this import. I'll import home, and you can assign any name you want here, from components home. Here's another neat feature this specific Webpack setup offers us. We have an alias for the root folder, the root folder in the source uh, project, I should say. So at slash refers to source, which is why with add slash components, we reach this file here. And there I'm now importing the home file, dot view also gets added automatically. So I'm importing home, got a couple of other files I need, for example, meetups here under components, and there it's under meetup, meetups dot view referring to this file. Next, I'll also import the create meetup component from the create meetup file in the same folder. 
And then from the user folder, I'll need the profile component. So here that's from slash user. Here the profile.view file is what we're referencing. And then we got the sign up from the user, the sign up file, and of course the sign in file, which I'll store in a sign in um, variable here. Now with these all imported, I can start adding routes. The first route, I'll give it a name of home and the name is optional. You don't have to assign a name. Um, we can simply omit it here. I guess I won't use it, but we'll see. You can use a name to navigate them instead of the path. So I'll leave the name for now and I'll add a new route here. Here, I want to set up a path of slash meetups and I want to load a component, the meetups component, of course. You can also assign a name here, meetups, to stay in line with the other setup. Then a new path is meetup slash new maybe. And of course you can choose any paths you would prefer. Whoops, don't forget to add the comma here after the name. I'll add a name here of create meetup and I'll load the component. Create meetup like that. I'll add another route here with a path of slash profile. I'll give it a name of, you guessed it, profile, and I'll load a component here, the profile component. Finally, we're at the last two routes here. The sign up path should load a component or a, a route load, named sign up, and I'll use my sign up component here. And finally, the last route, I know you, you all love adding routes is slash sign in with a name of sign in. It's super hot here, by the way. So that really is uh, fun to record this. So let's add sign in here. These are the routes I want to use in this application. Let's actually see if it works. We got the router view, we got routes. So if we go there and we enter slash sign in now, like that, we see the sign in page. If we add Oops, slash sign up there. We see the sign up page. Now regarding that navigation drawer, which kept occurring, that was related to the way we load our routes. Um, we could of course also prevent this, but I don't want to use this route style anyways, using this hash bang symbol and therefore having a different section for client side and server side routes. This development server actually is configured to fall back to that index.html file in case of 404 errors anyways. So we can use the prettier URL style, which we can set up in our index.js file on the router after the routes. I'll set mode to a string, which is history. And this uses the HTML file history mode, which is just a slash. So just these normal routes here instead of a hashtag in between. And as I mentioned, your server needs to be configured to handle this because if your server is not, this route obviously is always resolved first on the server and it won't be found there because we only set it up on the client. So your server needs to return the client in 404 error cases, needs to return the index.html file in such cases so that your index.html file can take over and can handle that route. This will become important later once we deploy this application. So far so good though, we have the routing set up. Now let's hook up all these links so that it actually works. So back in the app.view file here, I want to assign links to all my routes, right? And we again need to do this of course in our menu items here in the code. So there I'll quickly add a link property to all of them and link should be a string. Now for view meetups, this should just be meetups. For organizer meetup, that should be slash meetup new. For the profile, that should be slash profile. And for sign up, it should be slash sign up. For sign in, it of course should be slash sign in. Having the links here is nice. We also need to get them into our template though. And there's one other thing I wanna link up there, the title. If you click the title, I wanna go back to the root page. So here, I'll actually also assign a link to the title here. And you can do this by wrapping the dev meetup here into something you know from vanilla Vue.js, so to say, because it is vanilla Vue.js, a router link element. So that's not Vue.5, that's vanilla Vue. Here, we turn this into a link by adding router link to 
death meter, we're wrapping it in dead to be precise. Then we set two and I'll just set it to slash. And that actually is it for now. I want to give it a tag of span though, so that I'm not using an anchor tag to make it look nicer. And with that, I'll also add a style where I set the cursor to a pointer so that we again get this hovering effect, this, this pointer when we hover over it. With that, now you can see looks like a link, works like a link. You'll also notice though that this navigation drawer again pops up. So time to fix this issue. We can simply fix it by adding the temporary directive to the drawer, which basically means that it's not always present. It tries to add it otherwise if the page loads. So with that, if we now save this and let's go to another page first and click that link again, now we're back without the drawer opening. So that's all working, but our links still aren't hooked up. So let's go back there and now I want to add some links. Now for that, we need to link our list tiles and our buttons here. Let's start with the list tiles. I'll wrap these items here over multiple lines and then we can add a useful property or a directive to that. We can add router to the list tile to inform Udify that a click on this should use the router and then the two property to bind to something. Now here we won't just pass a string, instead we need to bind to the item link. Add a colon because we need to add a dynamic value here, the link of the current item. If we do this and we shrink this application so that we can see the drawer and we click on profile now, you see the user page, if you click on organize meetup, the create made meetup page and so on. So now this is working as it should and it's kind of similar for the toolbar. There, I also want to connect the router to it. So it's on the button now. I'll also organize that over multiple lines. And here to the button, we also add the router directive. And you can't add this to any component, but to many, to um, components where it typically makes sense to navigate. And just as before, we also need to set to and bind this to item link. With that, if we now reload this, click on view meetups, you see that all seems to work fine here. Get the basic setup of our navigation, was a lot of work, but with that we're now well prepared to start working on the individual pages. And I wanna start with the homepage and this carousel of different meetups in the next video.